Hello, my name's Bev and I'm the author of the book Please Eat, A Mother's Struggle to Free Her Teenage Son from Anorexia, which describes our family's battle with the deadly eating disorder, anorexia nervosa, which my teenage son Ben developed back in 2009 when he was just 15 years old. This post from the 23rd of May 2011 um, expands on what I was talking about in the last post, which is all about the warning signs in boys. And um, this post is called The Early Warning Signs in Boys, What to Look Out For. Today I was thinking back nostalgically to our family holidays before the anorexia muscled its way into our lives. Anorexia wasn't even on our radar, it was something that happened to girls, not to boys. Not in a million years of my wildest nightmares could I have dreamed that my wonderful teenage son was developing anorexia nervosa. Maybe if he'd been a girl, I'd have been alerted sooner. But I thought it might help other worried parents of boys if I listed some of the warning signs that should have set off the alarm bells ringing for us and we, that should have alerted us to the fact that everything was not all right with our son. Body obsession. I guess every teenager gets obsessed with their appearance at some time or other, especially girls. But increasingly, during the early part of 2009, Ben became completely obsessed with his looks. He'd take ages to get ready, preening himself with hair gels and straightening tongs. He loved shopping for clothes and spent a great deal of time examining himself in the mirror, inside and outside the home. Puppy fat. Ben had been an overweight child. Not a beast, but overweight. He was also very shy and introverted, preferring one or two close, equally introverted friends to a group of boisterous boys. However, by year nine, Ben had lost all the puppy fat and he looked fantastic, but he himself was extremely self-critical. Exercise. At primary school, Ben had hated sports, although he did play rugby on Sunday mornings with the local club. He wasn't wild about it and felt he was pushed to do it. However, he was rather good at it, and at senior school he was a regular in the first team in his year. But he was always the one who kept away from the boisterous boys. Although he was turning into quite a sportsman, he was still very shy, very quiet and academic. In July 2009, when the eating disorder was about to start manifesting itself, he won the 1500 metre race for his house at school on sports day, beating his constant rival. Ben also did cross-country running twice a week. Also, around this time, he started to buy men's health magazines and enthusiastically follow the exercise routines in order to try and get a six-pack like the men in the pictures. On holiday in France in July 2009, Ben was swimming a hundred lengths of the pool every day and also going out for a run. Back in the UK, he was getting so enthusiastic about how fit and healthy his body was that he got his dad to sign him up for the local gym. Ironically, his dad thought he was doing Ben a favour. Ben went to the gym every single day over the summer holidays and also went for runs and cycle rides. I started to notice that it was becoming almost like an addiction. He wasn't actually enjoying the exercise that much. Friends. Ben had blossomed at senior school and built up a lovely circle of friends. He was a regular at parties, sleepovers, cinema trips, meals out, etc. And his own birthday weekend in December was always a massive affair with half his friends sleeping over on the first night and the other half on the second night. He had so many friends he couldn't fit them all into his bedroom at once. And the massive breakfasts I used to cook for them on the Saturday and Sunday mornings were legendary. 
During the summer holidays of 2009, I was acutely aware that Ben had traded in sleepovers and cinema trips for the gym and running. He rarely saw his friends over the summer. Eating. The teenage Ben has always been interested in healthy eating. However, over the summer of 2009, it became more and more extreme. He started to cut out certain unhealthy foods. He also developed a passion for cooking and recipes, and especially for slimming down so-called fatty recipes. He also policed what we, his parents, purchased and ate. At first I found this kind of endearing, but after a while I realised something wasn't quite right. By the end of the summer, his eating had become very rigid. He began to insist on set meal times and was also pretty rigid with what he ate. He started meticulously preparing all kinds of weird and wonderful concoctions for snacks and puddings. Most noticeable was his chopping up of dried fruit. He'd cut the fruit into tiny pieces and all this food preparation would take ages, sometimes an hour, just to make a pudding that comprised of nothing but fruit. He also developed a passion for fresh fruit and for visiting the supermarket with me to buy the damn stuff, along with dried fruit. He also raved about low calorie foods, the lower in calories the better. And he became an expert at the nutritional content of just about everything, not just calories, but the all important to Ben fat content too, especially the demon of them all, saturated fat. On holiday, he avoided snacks like ice creams. When eating out, he'd deliberately choose the lowest calorie item and sometimes this meant moving cafes or restaurants until we found somewhere suitable. Mood. Ben was becoming more and more introvert. His mood was also quite depressed and he'd get snappy and bossy. Gradually, he seemed to be losing his usual zest for life his confidence, his optimism and his sense of humour. Also, once he started back at school, he started to develop an awful lot of illnesses, which he now claims were faked. Weight. Ben was losing weight rapidly because he was eating less and exercising more. I was also acutely aware that his diet wasn't balanced. There he was, rambling on about healthy eating, yet he cut out important components from his diet, notably all fats, even the so-called good fats. By late September, he had lost around one third of his body weight and was looking skinny rather than the handsome strapping lad he'd been before. That's the end of that post. As I said in the last post, the reason I write my blog, the reason I wrote my book, the reason I created my website and the reason I've recorded these videos is to help to raise awareness that boys get eating disorders and also to flag up the um, typical warning signs so other parents can take action quicker than, than we did and hopefully get their son into treatment faster and recovered quicker and I always say that if if, um, if one young person gets their life back faster as a result of this then it's been well worth it and of course as ever my son Ben is completely behind me in doing all of this. Thank you for listening. You'll find a link below to my blog and you'll also find a link to my website where you can download free PDFs of my blog and also a link to Amazon where you can buy a copy of my book.